Hello everyone, Cutting Total Designer here. Uh, we're going to start on disassembling and restoring the uh, South Bend Heavy 10. Uh, I think we're going to start with the compound rest. So, without further ado, we'll show you taking it off and disassembling. Okay, what we have to do is there's a set screw on each side of the cross slide and inside the set screw is a pin that's angled you have to basically unscrew these set screws out pretty far almost to the point where they come out and this is a uh, 730 seconds hex and then after that you can lift the uh, compound off you can see of course this is like tapered and this is where those tapered pins sit in Okay, so let's take it over to the bench and uh, start disassembling it. Alright. Okay. First thing we're going to do, and I've already had this apart and I've put it back together so it's a little bit easier. Um, this side right here, there is a Gibb locking screw. It's got a small slot, so kind of hard to get into it, but if you get a small enough screwdriver, you can get to it. It's not very long, very short. Uh, we'll set that aside. And let's see. Next thing we want to do is we want to take the knob off. And we have this uh, dual slotted nut that goes on here. And I don't have the proper wrench for it, but it looks like it was boogered a little bit before me, so somebody else probably did the same thing. And I give it a little tap. had this off once. It really helps to have the right thing, which we'll probably make one like a lot of other guys do. Alright, that spun it. Okay, just loosen it up and then it just comes off the end. Like so. That's the nut, and then the handle slides off. Now, there is a pin inside the knob with the corresponding slot on the uh, shaft. And maybe we can get you in a, a little bit closer. You can see the see the slot right there slot right there <clears throat> so make sure you don't lose that pin and then this is the dial the adjustable dial and it should slide off now I notice I think the brass piece there should be a little brass piece that sticks down to clamp on the shaft it doesn't look like it wants to come through so I'll probably have to disassemble the dial and uh, take a look at that from there is the main bushing and the zero mark is at the top um, what I did was I took an allen key while this is still on the machine and put in there and then lightly tap it with a hammer to get it to start unscrewing so now this should just unscrew from here Unscrew this the whole way. And there you go. Definitely needs cleaned up. And then from there, on the bottom, just checking the camera angle. There's the lead screw in here then the nut goes in here which we need an allen wrench for that 
And that's going to be, looks like uh, 3 16 is what it works out to be. So this, this screw here undoes the brass nut that's on the inside. There's a brass nut in here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to unscrew this screw. Okay. And this screw actually doesn't look that bad. There is some slop in this uh, when you go to turn it, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of wear on the screw, and I don't think there's a lot of wear on the nut when I had it out earlier. But I do think <clears throat> that there's a little bit, because this actually goes through here like this, and this shoulder sits on this top of the bushing. I think there's a little bit of wear there because whenever I move the dial on the shaft or uh, when I go to move this, this actually spreads apart a little bit. This actually separates like that. So I think it's not getting enough tension uh, in the assembly when it's put together. So we'll check that out as we go through and get everything cleaned up. But the nut, it's the screw itself looks uh, looks pretty good. So then what we'll do Again, what we have here is the gib screw and the gib. <clears throat> gib screw, gib. And it takes also a 3 16 hex. We'll do unscrew that. Take it out. And you can see the gib coming out with it. So that's the screw. It screws down in. And then here's the gib. Now the gib, you can see, got that slot in it to hold the head of the screw. And then you can push that in to tighten it up it is a tapered gib so it slides in and puts more tension on okay now here comes the tricky part I'm gonna go ahead and take this screw out that holds the nut in lift up on it and kind of let it slide out so there's the nut the brass nut for the lead screw and if I put this in here, and try to pull on it, I don't get any back and forth slop. I do get a little bit up and down and side to side, but I don't get any, I really don't get too much of any back slop uh, lashed to it. So I have a feeling that Either this screw and nut were both replaced, or at least this nut was replaced at one time. So the slop that we have in this compound, I think, really, uh, is from not being able to get this tension properly here at the front. So like I said, when I turn it, you can see the gap forming between the dial and, and the bushing face. So we'll check that out if necessary. Let's see what the end looks like. Yeah, you definitely can see some wear on there, and it's uneven wear. So what we might do is make a little little shim to put in here on this shoulder to space that out more so when we tighten all this down, it pulls this in further. So it'll have to go on this side of the shoulder, uh, and hopefully that'll take the slop out. But we'll see. So now, <clears throat> now that that's done, we should be able to just slide this right apart. And uh, there's the underside of the compound, the piece that rotates. If you can see it here, you can still see some of the scrapings on there. There's not a lot of wear by the looks of it, so that's a good sign. I don't see any rubbing up in here, so we don't have too much wear this way that would cause that to, to rub. Uh, still got the mill marks on it. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Okay, so, and then the bottom is. Uh, doesn't show a lot of wear. It's got this coloration just from, uh, you know, oil stain and rust. 
uh, but not really a whole lot. Still see all the mill marks. So that looks pretty good. Cast iron base. Okay. This oiler was, oil hole was plugged, so <clears throat> I'll probably do like a lot of people do is go in there and uh, tap this out to put a small set screw to keep other stuff getting in there, uh, except for when you go to oil it. Uh, overall, let's see what this looks like. Okay. So these have wear marks on them. No dig, no big gouges. Fairly smooth all together. Uh, inside here again, I see the mill marks. I don't see where anything has been uh, rubbing at all in there. And I'll have to clean it up a little bit better to see what the uh, dovetails look like. But it was pretty tight on there. Didn't have any side to side movement with the gib adjusted. So and the uh, the T slot. For the tool order mount is in excellent shape. Uh, really, no dings or breakage anywhere, so that's pretty solid. The only thing is this little little ding right here. Somebody hit with it. Looks like we have a little bit of scraping that went on here at different points and times, but just a little ding there. Uh, should clean up, and uh, what we'll probably do is get this stripped down. Uh, get it cleaned up and uh, see if we can polish some of this stuff out get this repainted I gotta go pick up some paint uh, the paint I'm gonna pick up uh, I have uh, gotten some information from uh, Brad Jacob basement shop guy uh, Maple Lane machine shop uh, it was very kind to send me the information so uh, I have a Sherwin-Williams uh, store not too far from here, uh, so I'll probably go and, and have that mixture uh, made up. And I really haven't done much to clean these yet, but uh, yeah, that actually isn't too bad. That probably might uh, clean up real well. I don't know if I'll have to polish that or not. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So got a brush finish on it, but I got to get this apart and. See why that brass piece in there isn't moving out and locking this down properly. This will definitely need some cleanup. Um, and as to the bushing, see how tight that is in the bushing. Okay, just a little, little wiggle, hardly any. So that's actually good. That's uh, excellent, actually. I think uh, I don't think I need another nut. I don't think I need another screw. Um, and I don't know if we can focus in on this, but <clears throat> let me take this back off. Wipe it off a little bit. And see if you can take a look at it. The top of the thread still are pretty shiny, but uh, I don't know if that's going to focus on it or not. Let me swing around here and see. Get that in there. But it looks like all the tops are pretty much the same width. I don't really see any issues with wear. They look pretty good, actually. All right, well, that's how we disassemble the compound. Now the next step is uh, we'll get this all cleaned up and de-rusted where there is some rust. I do. Okay, I was looking here. I see a line. I see a line right there on top of the compound. Let's see if we can get the light on it. See that line? Yeah. Let's see if we can get it on this one. Okay, see that line? It uh, looks like a score mark. I was thinking maybe there was some wear there, but uh, it's pretty much level. It just is a dig in. So somebody must have got a chip underneath there when they were turning the lantern base and chewed it pretty good. But this is in excellent shape. All these parts are in excellent shape. Uh, so I'm very, very, very pleased. We'll get uh, 
So you're getting the knob all cleaned up and polished. And again, be careful you don't lose that little round. It's a round key, which I think they, uh, when they assemble these things, they just drill a hole in and put a key in. So there you go. There's all the components. Zoom in a little bit more. And I guess that's it for this video. Uh, next video will probably show uh, getting it uh, after it's been cleaned up and uh, ready for paint, I hope. And we'll see about what we can do about polishing some of this stuff too. So, with that said, everyone, zoom me back out. Okay. Appreciate everybody watching. This is uh, part one of I have no idea how many videos this is going to take, but we're going to keep on going through every part, uh, getting us all put back together again when it's done, and getting it up and running. And hopefully we'll have uh, a VFD set up with the proper motor for it, and uh, uh, we'll be able to start making some chips. So, if you want to keep uh, Keep along with uh, the whole process, then uh, please subscribe, that way you can get notified. And uh, if uh, this is something that you're interested in, please give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Okay, till next time guys. Thanks. Take care.